Center for the Arts is Executive Director Christine Gilbert. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Vanessa. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? I am doing well. Another busy week. Uh, we got through the creative chaos that is Prime B Festival. And yes. All of those details. So we are moving on to our next event. As you know, our fall is very, very busy. We are wrapping up one important summer event. We are finishing a mural at Main and Penn in Roseville, Illinois. It is uh, the creative work of Rebecca Quick, our program coordinator in social media um, Maven, she has been working with Debbie and Dan Tafflinger, and they own the building at Maine and Penn in Roseville. And they approached us to see if we would be interested in painting a mural. And we worked with them, collaborated on an idea. And throughout the summer, Rebecca Quick and a few others have been working on that mural. It should be finished here within the next few weeks. We'll have a formal celebration. This is one of the projects I like to share with folks. Uh, this is the reason why we're in the community. Uh, we work with businesses uh, to help improve their spaces um, in addition to our art loan program. And these programs are also possible because of the Illinois Arts Council that funds our operating and program programming, as well as the Galesburg Community Foundation, and even more specifically, the Roseville Community Fund. And it's just been a, an absolutely lovely partnership. Um, we are happy to work with communities, not only in Monmouth, um, but throughout Warren County. And our programming has actually expanded to Henderson County, as well as Mercer County. So if you have a chance, take a peek at the building at Main and Penn in Roseville, if you're ever going by. It's a really beautiful piece of work. Yeah, what's going into the work? Kind of give us an idea of what's uh, in the mural. That is a great question. When we met with the Tafflingers, we wanted to get their idea of what they saw um, and what they envisioned. Um, and they also shared a little bit about the community. You know, there's the history that you find in textbooks, and then there's also the oral history, which is really wonderful to hear. And they shared a little bit of each, and we did some research. So on the mural, you'll see bits and pieces of the history. So the water tower with the rose. You'll see a reference to, of course, our strong agricultural community. You'll also see um, some businesses that have been highlighted and some fun things that are going on in the community. The bowling alley has really renovated their space. It is a community event center, a real gathering spot, as well as the ice cream shop. And then other bits and pieces that, when you think of Roseville, come to mind. Some historical spots, some of the architecture. And it's just been a real joy to work with them. Put together a real piece that is actually um, a destination spot. And it's a, a photo op. So you will see this piece of, of artwork, this public mural, and think, you know, this is something that I want to visit, I want to tell my friends about. But also when you go up to it, it looks like a thought bubble. You know, what people think of the community, what you thought maybe when you visited, and you can take a photo op with it. So it's really nicely done. Um, it's one of the creations that Rebecca has worked on murals for years and years, not only here, but in the Quad Cities. It'll be a nice addition to the community. We're really excited uh, to be able to complete that and celebrate it. Okay. All right. You have OFTA today. We do. Today at 10 a.m. in the BCA Gallery, we host uh, the Figgy Art Museum's co-creator, Joshua Johnson, for an update on the museum, as well as his time spent um, as our 64 Arts juror. Uh, refreshments will be served. As always, this event is free and open to the public and supported in part by the Jim and Jan DeYoung Charitable, Charitable Trust. So at 10 a.m. today, please join us in the BCA Gallery You'll get a sneak peek at 64 Arts and have a chance to talk to Joshua Johnson. Okay. Um, if you're not able to make it today, we do have our traditional Friday night reception. That is this Friday, September 13, 5 to 7. We will once again host Joshua Johnson and all of the art <clears throat> artists and community members who have helped us put together uh, this exhibition, we have more than 60 artists from across the country, from California to New York. Um, their work will be on display through November 1st. And in addition to that, we also have Nikki Ponce, who is a local art instructor. She has work and a small collection in our James Keefe Gallery. As always, 
Um, it is free and open to visit the gallery. Um, it's a chance to see some really amazing artwork from across the country. Um, please make uh, the trip downtown. I know you have to navigate the beautification project, but I guarantee you we are, as are all the shops and businesses downtown, well worth the trip. So please join us on Friday 5 to 7 for that gallery reception and awards presentation. I'm so excited to see the 64 Arts. It is always Kaylee's such a in nice here question. with us too, video. And Kaylee, we're going to go over and check out the, the artwork. It's, it's such a oh, great experience. That, that would be fabulous. Um, and of course, this time of year, we start planning our Taste of the Arts Gala. As I've mentioned before throughout this year, it is our 35th anniversary. The board and staff are excited to celebrate the annual Taste of the Arts Gala with a totally awesome 80s theme. Uh, tickets to the event are $60 and include um, m and &E Catering's Heavy Hors d'Oeuvres and Dessert a Buffet, as well as two drink tickets, live music with DJ Vital Beats, um, and lots of fun that evening with games of chance and a few throwback surprises from the 80s and maybe even uh, some video games. For those of you who experienced the 80s, we're going to have a lot of nostalgia there. Um, if you're not able to attend, um, I know that date on um, Saturday, November 9th, doesn't always work for folks. We start at 6 p.m. Um, you can still support our arts programming by purchasing a raffle ticket. We're only selling 200 of those, and that $50 ticket um, will get you a chance to win $1,000, $500, 250 um, in cash prizes, or 3000 in merchandise. Like I said, only 200 tickets are sold. Um, they're $50 each. You can purchase them um, at the Buchanan Center. Give us a call, or you can uh, donate online. We'll get you um, hooked up with a really wonderful opportunity to support the arts and a chance to win some cash prizes. Okay, I think we have a ball game on that Saturday, November 9th, you said? We so do. There I will buy a this. ticket oh. for the raffle. Thank you very much. I, I think I had to do it. that last year because we had a game. Yes, we seem to be falling on um, football games, which, you know, it is that time of year. And I always say to folks, um, those that say, oh, I, I don't really, you know, have anything to do or there's nothing going on. Well, let me let me help you. Let me show you because there are often many weekends that we have two and three things that we're interested in attending, and there's always something to do here in Mammoth. So you may have to play uh, Back to the Future in the background on a on a TV <laughs> or something. That would be great. Um, the final thing I wanted to talk about was. Um, Next Wednesday, we have a bonus gallery talk. It's a book talk. We will be hosting uh, Stacy Cordery and her latest book, Becoming Elizabeth Arden, the woman behind the global beauty empire. And she'll, um, she will present an overview of the life and innovations of the legendary beauty expert, Elizabeth Arden. It is Wednesday, September 18th at 10 a.m., we are really excited if you are uh, not familiar with Stacy Cordery. Uh, she earned her Ph.D. studying with Dr. Lou Gould at the University of Texas. She also taught at Monmouth College for 22, as she describes it, 22 happy years before relocating to Iowa State University, where she serves as uh, the Director of Undergraduate Studies for the History Department. She is an award-winning teacher, respected author, and popular lecturer, um, Cordery's earlier books include biographies from Alice Roosevelt, Longworth, and Girl Scout founder Julia Gordon Lowe, which is one of my favorite books. She has appeared on NPR, CNN, C-SPAN, the History Channel, Smithsonian, St Smithsonian TV, and elsewhere. So if you would like to join us on Wednesday, September 18 at 10 a.m., we will have a few of her books for sale at the event. Um, refreshments will be served. And as always, this event is free and open to the public. And I want to share a special thanks to Lou Gould and Jean Robeson for sponsoring this uh, bonus gallery talk this year. Excellent. Um, as always, thank you to the community. We've had another very busy, incredibly creative year in the arts. And it is because of the investment of our community members, businesses, and foundations um, our staff is able to bring the arts to the community in multiple forms, and we look forward to finishing out a really fun year and building 
next year's schedule. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad to have you in here. Thank you for coming in today. As always, thanks. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. We'll talk soon. 